Hi, thanks for joining another video today. Today we're looking at the 2020 Jaguar I-Pace. This is Jaguar's first electric vehicle and its concept model was announced in 2016, then its production car was announced in March 2018. Deliveries for North America started in October 2018. The one I have today is a Jaguar I-Pace SE. The EPA estimated range is 234 miles and gets 76 miles per gallon equivalent, or about 444 watt hours per mile. It does 0 to 16 4.5 seconds and is all wheel drive. The I-Pace has two permanent magnet synchronous electric motors and generates 394 horsepower. It has a 90 kilowatt hour battery with a pretty complicated thermal management system. They're able to move heat between the motors, battery and cabin to make the car more efficient. This is a great feature and the complexity of this system gives me a lot of confidence of the longevity of the battery. If you're interested in purchasing an I-Pace, they have three trims to choose from, the S, SE, and the HSE. The prices range from around $70,000 to $80,000 base MSRP. Of course, there are a lot of extra features and designs you can add to your build. Let's start off by looking at the exterior, then we will look into the interior features, driving, and of course, charging. The exterior looks stylish in my opinion. It looks like a luxury crossover and it's sporty. The door handles pop out when you need to use them and retract to be flush with the door. So I have this key fob and I'm going to unlock it. This gives it a clean look and helps with efficiency by making the car more aerodynamic. This vehicle has a 20 inch dark gray wheels added. I like how they look. This trim comes with an automatic trunk. Behind the seats, you get 25.3 cubic feet of cargo space. Then underneath here, you have a little um, extra room to store your charging equipment. The seats are pretty easy to put down too, so I'll put them down so we can see how much space we have. Yeah, pretty decent amount of room. In the front, you have a little extra space. Under the hood, you get 0.95 cubic feet of space. You can probably fit a few small items in here. The interior definitely feels high-end and the seats are nice too. Here you have the infotainment system with the 10-inch touchscreen. You can adjust your menu so you can have a customized homepage. So you can kind of tap around and add uh, what you would like to see on your home screen. It has built-in navigation that shows live traffic and also tells you your range based on your current trip. So let's try it out. So let me enter in a destination. Let's try Los Angeles. It's cool, it shows you the Google Street View of the map and your destination. So the route it's telling me is to stop in Buckeye, which is a city that's uh, like 40 minutes away from here. And it tells me to stop there, Electrify America to charge once. And then um, it's telling me that I'll arrive to Los Angeles with like a negative 97% battery. I'm not too sure what that means. I don't know if I'm using this map incorrectly or if it's not mapping us right. Um, so I'm not sure if it needs more work or if I'm, it's just a, a user error, but there's always apps. Uh, that you can use to get to your destination. There's also a Wi-Fi hotspot. The car supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So I have my phone connected right now and I can see all of my apps. Under My EV, you can see your battery range and you can schedule your charging times and adjust preconditioning preferences. Underneath you have a 5.5 inch touchscreen that controls the climate and seat heaters.
I like that the car gives you a little bit more information about your driving history and driving style. So it kind of gives you some nice graphs and it will show here your range impact and how you're driving. It has a good mix of touchscreen and dial control. So if you're not a fan of having only touchscreens, you do get more controls with these useful dials. So I did notice that the screen is pretty laggy, especially when going through um, different kinds of menus. So it's a little slow to react. In the front, there is a 12.3 inch drive display where you can see navigation, battery percentage, and driving information. They also sell this car with the heads up display, but the one I'm driving today doesn't have that feature. The center console has a lot of space. There's an open space back here. Um, we could probably fit a wallet. You have space for your sunglasses, a neat little spot for your cell phone, um, for your water bottle and then here we have a pretty deep space. I have my iPad in here. You have USB 3s and a micro SIM slot. Also up here you have a spot for your sunglasses and then these lights are pretty neat. You just have to lightly tap them and the light will turn on. In the back you have a good amount of space and your AC vents are here on the sides. And up up top, you have a really nice view of the panoramic roof. There's no beams or anything in the center to obstruct the view. All right, and then down here, you have uh, USB ports and a 12 volt port. And up here, we have um, your light switcher. You have to push a button for these ones. The iPace comes with a level one cable where you can plug into a regular outlet. Unfortunately, I don't have that charging cable right now, but this is what it looks like. Jaguar states that it can charge up to 80% in less than 45 minutes with a DC fast charger. This seems to be the standard right now, so it's in line with what other cars can do. The vehicle can charge up to seven kilowatts on a level two charger and get a full charge in around 12 hours. I'm a little surprised they didn't opt for a higher power onboard charger, seeing as it does have a pretty big battery. This isn't a big deal, just something I wish more automakers would do. I'm currently charging at Electrify America and I plugged in at 32% and I'm oddly only getting an output of 36 kilowatts from the charger. I did try charging at other Electrify America's chargers, but it keeps giving me the same number. So um, I'm not sure what the issue is. Uh, I called up Electrify America just to see maybe it's the charger and they said there's no known issues right now with the iPace and Electrify America. So I'm, I'm thinking that perhaps there is an issue specifically with the car I'm driving, not the not Jaguar iPace itself, but just this car. Um, I don't know what the issue could be. So I don't wanna talk too much about the charging experience. Unfortunately, I wish I could talk more and um, cause the car is listed to have 100 kilowatts of charger output for a DC fast charger. So again, unfortunately I can't talk too much about charging. Hopefully maybe I'll get to review it again and we'll get to charge a little bit more on it and talk about more about it, but. Still, the Jaguar Paces does really good if it charges at 100 kilowatts. The so Jaguar I Pace is doing really well um, on the road. One thing I did notice is that um, I have limited visibility through the back uh, window. I think it's because of the way it's shaped, but I have a very narrow visibility looking through there. And then the other thing I also want to mention is that under My EV, um, you can change the settings, turn off creep or turn it on, and also the regenerative braking, you can set high or low. Um, my preferences are to keep regenerative braking on high. So there's this road up ahead that I drive on sometimes, and it's a very terrible road. It has potholes and bumps everywhere, and when I drive it on my car, I'm just like bouncing everywhere. So I wanna try the air suspension on this car and see how well it handles and drives on that road. Okay, I'm approaching that section of the road. And honestly, it's doing really well. The car is really absorbing all of that. Um, I'm definitely not moving as much as in my car. This is just pretty good. It's a smooth ride. I like the air suspension in the car. So there are a few different driving modes you can adjust your car to. 
So we have, let's start from the bottom, you can do a dynamic drive, which is uh, makes your car more sporty. Comfort mode, which is like your everyday driving, more of a balanced drive. You have eco mode, which makes the car more efficient. And then rain, ice, and snow mode, which is probably more self-explanatory. You can adjust the interior sound from calm to dynamic, and then this helps you um, get better feedback of your driving and get a sense of how fast you're driving. So if we're driving in calm right now, um, just a little slow here, you don't really hear a lot of, um, of noise. It's pretty quiet, but let's switch it over to dynamic. Um, and it, okay, and then we're gonna speed up and so see if you can hear um, the sound with it, that it emits. on dynamic mode and we're gonna do a quick launch. Okay, ready? Here we go. Whoa. That is so quick. <laughs> we're driving on the freeway and the vehicle has air suspension. So when you go over 65 miles per hour, um, the air suspension will automatically go to a lower mode which will help with fuel efficiency. So I think this EV has been the quietest interior of all the EVs I've test driven so far. It's really quiet in here. And I think it's because they have this special double pane or acoustic uh, glass that they have on this car. Um, so the noise on the road and outside is very minimal. I really don't hear wind noise coming in. Um, if you do hear any noise right now, it's the AC's on, but I really like that it's really quiet in here. Overall, I would describe my drive in the I-Pace, that the car is very agile and very sporty. Um, it drives really smooth. I really like how it drives. I feel like a little bit like I'm driving on, on clouds, just gliding on the road. The other thing I wanted to mention is that you can save the different seat adjustments on the side. Here, there's like, I think there's three settings on there. And I really like all the different positions that are available. I sit up really high to get a good view. But if you're shorter, you can really do some fine adjustments to make yourself comfortable. The Jaguar I-Pace has a lot of safety features you can purchase and add to your build. This one specifically, uh, this trim doesn't have all of the safety features, but it does have adaptive cruise control, um, which is perfect for the freeway. So I'll set it here, and then you could also set the distance between you and the other car. I can make it have a bigger gap or less of a gap. So great for um, freeway driving. It also has lane keep assist, which will help you stay in the lane. So if you're kind of uh, going over the lane, it'll gently nudge you right over. Um, you still have to take control of the steering, but it is helpful if you're kind of drifting off into the other lane. It also has blind spot warning, which is always helpful. I love that feature. I do want to go back to this car's fuel economy rating for a moment. This car has a rated 76 miles per gallon equivalent, which is kind of low for an EV. It is in line with the Audi e-tron, which gets 77 miles per gallon equivalent, but both of those numbers are lower than I'd like to see in an electric vehicle. Remember, electric cars have a higher carbon footprint at production, so where they get their greenness is due to their greater efficiency. Jaguar compares this car to the Model X, but I think the Model Y is a better car to compare it to based on its size. Looking at the 2021 Tesla Model Y Performance, the least fuel efficient version, it gets 111 miles per gallon equivalent. Though I think it looks worse when you look at something like the Hyundai Ioniq. The hybrid version can get a combined 59 miles per gallon. I know it's a different class of car and uses gas, but still 76 versus 59? It's only a small increase in fuel economy in comparison to an all gas car. One more comparison, if we look at a 2021 Model 3 Standard Range Plus, it has about a 55 kilowatt hour battery pack and can go 263 miles. This 2020 I-Pace has a 90 kilowatt hour battery and can only go 234 miles. The battery is 38% smaller than the I-Pace, but can go just as far, even a little farther. Again, we're comparing sedans to crossovers, but the I-Pace, when set to low suspension, isn't that much bigger than the Model 3. Okay, that's enough of a rant about fuel economy. All EVs are required to have a pedestrian speaker that emits sound under 19 miles per hour. Let's hear it. It's like a humming noise. 
and it also has a beeping noise when you go in reverse. There are federal tax credits available for a new iPACE, so that's a bonus if you're going to buy one new. The other features I don't have access to is the activity key, which is a key in the form of a wristband. So you can leave your key fob in your car and just tap the wristband to the car to unlock it. There is also the ability to view and control your car with the Jaguar in Control app. Additionally, it has a limited warranty that covers 5 years or 60,000 miles and an 8-year 100,000 mile warranty with a retention of 70%. The iPACE has elegance and attention to detail. It offers modern technology, great acceleration, and it drives well. I definitely wouldn't mind taking this car on a trip. And as always, I recommend you go for a test drive. Is your next car going to be an electric jack? Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more V content and follow me on social media at KaiZV and Kai's Tesla. Kai's my dog. And check out my website at KaiZV.com. That's all for now, and happy charging.